Hi there, Glocal Citizens. Welcome back to the podcast that inspires a borderless mindset around manifesting a new world. I am your host, Florence Adu, coming to you with part two of my quantum conversation with Dr. Hakim Ogushei. He is, if you had missed it in part one of the conversation, an astrophysicist, author, STEM educator, multi-patented inventor, voice actor, TV personality, science communicator, and keynote speaker. He sees his professional mission as advancing humanity's understanding of the universe through scientific inquiry, passing on the detailed knowledge of this process and its results to the next generation and service to humanity and country. His memoir, A Quantum Life, My Unlikely Journey from the Streets to the Stars is available now at bookstores everywhere. Definitely go and check that out, pick it up. So we're picking up the conversation, talking a little bit about Glocal Speak. So you're talking about all this travel and all these yeah. things. So I like to talk about local speak. Oh, yeah. 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 So we want to hear what you yeah. hear. So if you could yeah. share a word, a phrase or a mm. saying yeah. that is a meaningful part of your local experience and mm. how you've come to value it as a global speak. And so local, you know, we're here in the DMV, but obviously you've been in many places. So something yeah. that's that feels local to you. You know, I'd have to say something from Mississippi or New Orleans. OK. So the word that comes to mind, keep it on the African theme, is gumbo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> gumbo. Is it dinner time? <laughs> oh, I, I just got hungry when I said it. Right? Yeah. Every time I did New Orleans, I gained like 10, 15 pounds. Just, yeah, okay. gumbo. Okay. Because also, you know, gumbo is that mix of everything. Yes, right? And yes, that's kind of yes. how I feel. Yeah. You know, I don't yeah. feel like, you know, I, I, I remember when I first got on Twitter, I was motivated to tweet, I am more than one thing. Ah, okay. Right? Okay. Because, you know, what are you? You, are you? Because even among the astronomers and the physicists, they're like, are you an astronomer or are you a physicist? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, I, I, I default to physicists because that's more general. Sure. But I'm like, you know, I always say I'm a science mercenary. You know, yeah. I, I, I like okay. to find interesting problems yep. and work on them, whatever yep. the hell sure. it is. If it's an engineering, if it's an astronomy, sure. if it's an astronomy, I've yeah. just done stuff in history, I've done stuff in education, yeah. you know, real yeah. publications, right? right? So yeah, it, you know, I'm not, I'm not fitting in any boxes, right? Yeah. Maybe the human earthling box, sure. but, right. but you sure know, I love to perform, right? Yeah, you know, I might yeah. drop a rhyme, I might <laughs> pull out my tuba, you know, and, and don't tell them, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and, yeah. and, I, and I see that in all humanity. I, I, I'm always looking at other people and envious of their talent. I know not envious, but in, in, in admiration of yep. their talent, yep. right? And I always feel like the least talented guy in the room. You know what I mean? Mm, <laughs> so, yeah. And so I feel like I'm trying to keep up with everybody else. Sure, you know? sure. And so that's when I say I see it in every, I see it the same thing in others. Yeah. Like, for example, take a, a show like American Idol. When you grow up in the hood, you know people that are amazing singers that never see the light of day. Mm-hmm. Never see the light of day. Mm-hmm. And I'm like watching American Idol. I'm like, where are these people? How come they don't, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, they, how come their recruiters can't find them? Right. Know? Yeah. Because yeah. you go yeah. to church, you know, so yeah, exactly. Like, oh, not exactly. everybody, but you know, right. in any little There's some, some yeah. square area of, of, you know, you're going to, and it's not that big, you're right. going to find ama- people that are amazing at so many things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And that's what's the shame for me when I got to Stanford and saw this whole class divide oh, in opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like one of the first things yeah. I realized was I said to myself, I looked at people around me and I was like, man, you guys are ultra educated, mm-hmm. but you're not intrinsically smarter than around the people I grew up around. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I thought r- r- with regards to myself, I was like, OK, you guys are all way better educated than me, but can't none of you outwork me. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm going to, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. nose mm-hmm. to the grindstone. I'm going to catch you and I'm going to surpass you. Right. Give me a few years. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. You know, there's no way around the hard work and exactly. it just takes time. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And, and when you're inefficient at it, when you're young right now, I know that given a good problem, you know, I can be the world's expert in some topic in like 18 to 24 months. Right. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. Right. Because you have a system. You, you understand yeah, exactly. how to go through the rigors. You understand yeah. all of that. Exactly. Yeah. It's very efficient yeah. now. Of just yeah. getting there to the yep. point, right? Sure. Yeah. Sure, and when sure. you're young and any fisher, you, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you yeah. just don't know the system how to do it. Yet, right. Right. It's, right. It's, it's like LeBron playing basketball now versus young LeBron. Right. right? Yeah. You know. Yeah. 
He's he had all of that athletic talent, but the efficiency was just, mm-hmm. you know, not the same. Mm-hmm. Now he gets the same thing done with a lot less motion. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So that's a good segue into my mindset hack yeah. question. Yeah. So what is your favorite or an innovative mindset hack? One yeah. that you know, one that you practice, one that you can imagine. Yeah, I have had to hack my mindset all my life okay. to get myself through things. I tell myself things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so this come came out of physics for me. Mm-hmm. It's not anything it's like what you know there's a lot of discoveries that i make that i discover while already discovering mm-hmm. <laughs> going all the way back to college mm-hmm, right mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so of course albert einstein discovered this first figured this out first but i was sitting thinking one day i think about space and time a lot and a foundational physicist one of the founders of astro particle physics this guy named rocky cobb also from new orleans but he spent his entire career in chicago mm-hmm. we were having dinner one night back in 2003 in mm-hmm. chicago and we were talking about having these deep insights to make really revolutionary changes in physics and how we understand the universe. And he said, yeah, man, it's like that Mark Twain saying, it's an apocryphal Mark Twain saying, it's not what you don't know, it's what you know that ain't so, mm. right? And you know, he talked about at that moment in that conversation, how Albert Einstein, you know, his his revolution in space and time, you know, turned over what we all thought we knew to be true, which right. wasn't, right? Right, right. So anyway, I started thinking about what do we know? What could it, I possibly know that ain't so, right? And, you know, I also think about like, what could different realities be that I wouldn't be able to do an experiment to differentiate between them? Because ultimately, mm-hmm. it comes down to what you observe to be true sure. is what is true, right? Sure. And you do that through experiments or rigorous observations, right? Yeah. So in that thinking, I thought to myself, I was like, you know, time. You and I are sitting here next to this microphone and we call this moment that we're sharing now. Mm -hmm. And we believe collectively as humans that our now is the actual now of the universe. That there's that history that led up to this moment and now this now is the actual real now. But then I thought, I was like, but wait, every conscious being who has ever lived or who will ever live has that exact same thought. So what makes my now the actual now? This means to me now that all time lives are co-equal and all times are co-equal. Now, the way Einstein expressed this was in a letter to a bereaved friend who had lost her spouse. Mm -hmm. I think she was a woman. Mm -hmm. And basically he said, you know, don't be so sad because if you could see time the way God does, it's just all out there, Mm -hmm. you know? So one way of thinking of it is, you know, when the universe began, you and I were here having this conversation, Mm -hmm. right? So anyway, how do I use that as a mind hack? Mm -hmm. I say to myself, as far as I know, it's already a billion years from now and I'm already dead. So Mm -hmm. what is there to be embarrassed about? What is there to hold back about? So a lot of this stuff that I do that's performance, right? How do you come across well as a voice actor? How do you come across well on camera? It's really simple. Be yourself, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Be true to your real emotions. Mm -hmm. Be who you really are in that contrived moment, right? right? And But it's so hard, right? It's so hard. We we, we often will be, be what we think we're supposed to be. I but you know, if you like look at TED Talks, they all yeah. kind of talk the same. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah it's a it's yeah. a style. Yes. Right? Because that's what I do as a TED Talk. <laughs> and, and, and exactly. the, yeah, and the same thing goes yeah. with yeah. different careers. Sure. Right? Yeah. Businesses talk like physicists, mm-hmm. teachers, you know, it, mm-hmm. and so that's why I personally don't talk like a physicist. Right, you know. I'm purposefully ebonic-y. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you Yourself. Know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. just being myself because yeah. I'm also showing that I talk this way, but hell yeah, I'm brilliant. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm not brilliant because I'm smart. I don't believe in smart. Mm. It's it's what has actually been accomplished, mm-hmm. right? It is, mm-hmm. it is, don't talk to me, don't ask me, go look at the work, go look up the papers, go right. look up the patents. Right. That's what it is, yeah. right? Talk to the people who've had the impact. That's the real, that's the real thing. Yeah. And yeah, I talk like this. Yeah, yeah I need to go to a dentist. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, you know, we judge each other yeah. on these shallow things. Sure. And one thing that, you know, I see myself as a human human, right you know i'm in this sci-fi world right mm-hmm. so i want us to be one planet all working together mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and i'm like if we could do that we would be star trek tomorrow yes but we're always trying to one up each other we're all you know we're doing right. all these, the hierarchies yeah, yeah all the hierarchies yeah. all yeah. the bs all right. all this stuff and sure. I'm just like let's just be productive have yeah. you know work together and just be dope right yeah. yeah yeah so yeah. that's 
That's my mind hack that I use. I absolutely love that. And I just amusing with the thought that I wonder what our challenge is evolutionarily from the physical form that makes us continue to default to yeah, default right, to that right. to that piece. And so that's uh, one of the big well, signs. I'll tell you what my interpretation is of our latest evolution. OK, so our latest evolution goes by two letters, AI. Yes. Artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And what AI is showing seems to be really close to actual intelligence, right? Sure. So they're like, if you just take chat GPT, the initial manifestation of chat GPT was basically copy and paste, right? Yes. I'm predicting the yes. next word, but really I'm taking what already exists and kind of sending it back to you. Yeah. But there are these experiments that the researchers did with the chat GPT-4, mm -hmm. where it actually shows thought. Like, for example, I was listening to uh, an interview, a podcast with this one guy who was, a, who was a researcher. He said, you know, I was thinking about what tests I could give it, because if you give it all the information on the Internet and now you want to test it, how do you test it with something it's never seen before? Right. So he was like, OK, here's what I'm going to do. It's not a drawing AI, but maybe it can draw. So I'm going to ask it use this very obscure programming language and give me a code to draw a unicorn. Mm -hmm. And so based on the limits of that code, it couldn't draw like a really vivid unicorn, yeah. but it could draw basically using rectangles and ovals yeah. and triangles, the shape of a unicorn. It's like, there it was, right. right? So then they're like, okay, let's do it like this. Let's take this code and modify it to remove the unicorns Horn, horn mm -hmm. and rotate it so it doesn't even look like a unicorn anymore. And say, here's a code of a unicorn. Put the horn on its head. Put a horn on its head with mm -hmm. triangle. Mm -hmm. And it did it, right? Mm -hmm. So something doesn't even look like a unicorn, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this level of thought. Now, the next thing is, there is a recent result in anthro archaeoanthropology or whatever you call it, mm -hmm. where this these early humans called the Yeah. In this cave in South Africa, mm -hmm. they found these bodies deep in this cave. Yeah. And so there's two things that humans began to do 78,000 years ago. These cats were doing it 160, like the first evidence of humans burying the dead, yeah. 78,000 years ago. Sure. These bones could be potentially as old as 500,000 years ago, but minimally like 300,000 years mm. ago. And so... Mm -hmm. caching is when you take like when you look at uh, the Dogon where they have all the bodies and the mm -hmm. caves and mm -hmm. the cliffs right there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's called caching mm -hmm. burying the dead so two of the skeletons are completely intact or in these oval shaped depressions mm -hmm. where it looked like based on the, the way it's disturbed sure. like they were actually buried and then at the same location they, they have cave markings like they were you know the like, tombstones or sure, cave walls sure, or something sure, like sure, that, right? Sure, sure. Like, uh -huh. Now, all other anthropologists are like, well, you can't say it was them that did it because you can't really date those. It could have been some later humans that came in there. But the burying and caching thing are still pretty amazing. But here's the thing. Those cats had really tiny brains, yeah. just like AI has a really tiny brain right. today. Right. So what this is saying to us is we thought intelligence was this our super brain, we slowly developed it and we're so unique. Yeah. But really, intelligence may be really easy is the thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe all we're doing yeah. is predicting the next word. You know, yeah. it's, it's yeah. you know, so we've given it this sort of like aura of amazingness. But now we're seeing that, oh, maybe, and, and, you know, you look at like, you know, chimpanzees use spears to yeah. kill monkeys. Right. Right. They use simple stone tools. They, yep. You know, humans were in the Stone Age for two million years yeah. before we before we came out. Right? right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Before we started doing metals and, mm -hmm. and such. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, the early pre-human, pre-homo sapiens humans who were doing this stuff. Yeah. If nothing else, they showed that these homo naledis were doing this for generations. Right. To do something disorganized required a type of communication yeah. beyond what chimpanzees and gorillas are doing. Mm -hmm. It requires some sort of language, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we didn't think other brains were capable of that, but it looks like maybe they were. Right. Now we see that the computer overnight is capable of that. I love that you said yeah. intelligence is much easier than we think it is. Yeah. Because because yeah. I think if that were spoon fed to every child. Oh, yeah. Then where would we be in this world? Yeah. You know, we would yeah. we would have these amazing people who are just doing 
everything that is, a, you know, counter to the hierarchies, counter to everything. Right. Well, yeah. you know, the, the other problem is one of the things I love about the Hakeem, I thought I was dumb until I met you, mm -hmm. is, you know, I'll be walking in the mall. Yeah. And some man and his kids will come up to me. And they're like, you know, the way he speaks, I know he's from the undereducated community, just like me. Sure. Right. Sure. And he was like, yeah, man, you made me. Re this is what people have said. Yeah. I'm quoting people, right? Yeah. yeah. Man, you made me rethink my relationship with, with science. I think now I'm going to go to college and do this because we always talk about educating the children. Mm -hmm. You cannot educate the children without educating the people older than the it's children. It's true. Their caretakers are, are, Absolutely. are pivotal. Absolutely. Yeah. There was nothing anybody in my home or community could say to me. They had one sentence to offer, maybe two sentences. Mm -hmm. And those sentences were, stay in school. If I had to all over again, I'd have stayed in school. They have no idea. They've never done it. Yeah. So they have no idea how to do it. Knowledge is proprietary. Mm -hmm. So it's not a coincidence that Kobe Bryant's and Steph Curry's fathers were professional wow. Basketball players, the Morris brothers, professional. Sure. There's so much of that. Yeah. You, 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 it's not that they have the magic gene. Right. It's that they it's got the, the magic education yeah. from an expert at it. Yeah. Like my, when my mother said to me when, when my son was very young, my son said, I think he's smarter than you are. I'm like, no, the hell he ain't. His daddy got a PhD in physics. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, I had to, my, my dad dropped out of school when he was nine. Like, right. who's smart? <laughs> He's way better educated than everyone. Sure. I couldn't right. compete with him yeah. at that level. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But, you know, yeah. my education couldn't compete with his education. Sure. But, yeah. you know, and, and so you have brilliant people, kids out here yeah. that are in homes with brilliant parents who are not educated, right? And the stuff that gets you in Harvard, mm -hmm. right? So my, my parents were hella educated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they gave me, you know, when I got to Stanford, I was like, yeah, can't nobody in here clean a squirrel better than me. Nobody else knows how to process a possum and armadillo like I do, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> that, I was the best. You know, like when I went to- Yeah, uh, it's all context, yeah. It's all context. <laughs> I went to this thing, my first trip out of the country, not counting Tijuana when I yeah. went in a Navy station sure. in San Diego, sure. was to the International School of Space Science in L'Aquila, Italy. I was the greatest basketball player for miles around. Yeah. I was, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> right? <laughs> the city I left, I was not. Right. <laughs> but over in L'Aquila, oh, sure. I am the man now, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, and it's all, it's all relative. Yeah. You know, it's all relative. It's who you have access to right. and who that help is. And the yeah. first help we all get is our parents and our community. You know, yes. the 10 year old is following the, is being influenced by the 12 and the 13 year old, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I've been saying for the last decade in America and probably in the world, but, but maybe not, there's only two ways you graduated high school, well educated in mathematics. Way number one, it's in your house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Way number two, mm -hmm. you got lucky. Mm -hmm. If you go to school and learn math, mm -hmm. you really got lucky. Right. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's not... I mean, particularly now, it's very oh, true. Yeah. yeah, yeah, particularly yeah. Now. So as we start to wrap it up, I want to yeah. find out who is Hakeem that is not the astrophysicist yeah. or the media personality right. or the science communicator. Yeah. And so I like to ask you, are you a reader? Are you a watcher? Are you a listener? And what are some of your your favorite read watches or listens? I'm all of the above. Okay. And I'm also a big goof. Like okay. I love to play with kids okay. and I love to like just make people laugh. Yeah. You know, and I'm, and the other thing <laughs> that is like, <laughs> I break out in the song and yeah, or dance right. at the drop of a hat all day, every day. Sure. Like, and I don't care. You right. know, it's like, right. you know, the mood hits me. Like, if you ever see yeah. me drive my car, I am jamming out at yeah. all times, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I can't stop reading. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it all depends, right? It, it, you know, I'm, I'm always searching for things interesting. Okay. Um, and, okay. You know, and because of YouTube, I wasn't really a YouTube watcher. Until? The pandemic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I did basically two PhDs, one in one in geology and one mm. in biology. Mm. Yeah, I, I never really was interested in biology for some crazy reason. So I had no idea how a cell really worked. Yeah. 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 Oh, now? Oh, I'm an expert on abiogenesis. I'm right. <laughs> right. right. And I can imagine how it layers onto your, your physics. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Does. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, yeah, totally. 
I okay. love history as okay. well. On yeah. on YouTube or just generally? Just generally. I love to okay. read it and, okay. I, and I go to YouTube for it, right? If you find sure. good ones. Mm -hmm. So podcasts, I really haven't listened to a lot of podcasts, but okay. during the pandemic, I listened to Dan Carlin's Hardcore History okay. and Philosophize This. Because ah. I knew I knew nothing about philosophy. Sure. And here's this guy who's going to go through every philosopher and what they did in yeah. an interesting way. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I, I love listening to it. Yeah. Philosophize this. Dan Carlin's hardcore history is about the history of war. His episodes will be like four or five hours long. He does wow. everything himself. Right. So and, he's a lecturer on his own. Yeah, but he's yeah. Just, he basically does not write a script, right? Okay. The thing he does do, though, is he has a lot of... He reads from primary material. Got eyewitness it. accounts Got at it. that time. Sure. Yeah, and, sure. He, and he gives a lot of context. And it's very... When he goes to that reading voice, it's very old-timey, like old-timey... Like radio... Uh, yeah, program. like like the radio like, program. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I love it. I yeah. love it. Yeah, yeah, but man, some of it is too much. Like, right. he, he started talking about, like, the stuff in the Coliseum, you know, the yes. what people will the watch. And I'm like, okay, yeah. I can't listen to this. Yeah. This is just gore for the yeah. sake of gore. Yeah, it's not, and it was. Yeah, yeah, but understanding... You know these these great wars of history, these mm -hmm. personages mm -hmm. like you know Genghis Khan, and mm -hmm. you know, it's just like mm -hmm. wow, mm -hmm. like World War One. You know everybody knows the story of World War Two, it backwards and forwards, but the story of World War One, yes. how we got kicked off in detail, right. you know, it, 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 yeah, it's fascinating. It's really fascinating, yeah. but also the German military machine mm -hmm. to hear the eyewitnesses mm -hmm. of the people as they marched across Belgium to get to France and, and just like how, you know, this thing just shows up and just for day after day, yeah. you know, this this super organized and efficient mass of humanity wow. just yeah. moves past. And, and, you know, he's reading the eyewitness accounts and, and because back in the day, you know how people wrote. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Detail, exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it is just so fascinating. Sure. So I'm curious about when you mentioned not knowing much about philosophy. Yeah. Because I find that all of our scientists from the days of old, our ancient, were philosophers. Absolutely. And so I'm not necessarily seeing yeah. that now, but are we seeing that and missing oh, it's, it? Oh, it's an even worse situation because there's a snobbery. Mm -hmm. So there's a branch of philosophy, philosophy called the philosophy of science. Okay. And they write these scientific papers sure. that are not databased in the same way that our papers are. Oh, okay. So sometimes they'll come up with something that's really interesting to the world. Yeah. And the physicists are like, look at this crap. You know, and then, right, um, and that's how it's always been, right? Like, well, you at know, first, you said, they were natural philosophers. Sure, that's what they were. Yeah, and so yeah. it was sort of like a, 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 a respect for each other. Right, and it seems like physicists, a lot of the physicists that speak publicly about it, they really admire the philosophy that does not go into the realm of science, mm -hmm. but they kind of feel like the science philosophers are faking science. It's kind of how it comes across their attitude to me. Mm -hmm. It's like science light, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. not real mm -hmm. science, mm -hmm. therefore your conclusions mm -hmm. can't be right. trusted. Right. But I think philosophy by definition is stuff that cannot be known, right? It's, right. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. And right. so to have that as your metric for is, is it valuable is, is not... Yeah, it's counter to it, even... It's not fair yeah, because you're yeah, not, yeah. you know, it's by definition the unknown. You right. can't be rigorous in that way. Sure. With it. Yeah. You just have to be rigorous in logic, which is mm -hmm. one of the branches of science. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, when you look at the, the branches of science, that's another thing that happens that is one of my soapbox items to get people to understand. Yeah. Because being from a rural community that's very religious, you know, I go home and my buddies will be like, Hakeem, Man can't know everything, you know. Yeah. And then they're like, you know, yeah. I knew a buddy, you know, science is crap. I know a guy, the doctor gave him 12 seconds to live. That was 48 years ago and he's still kicking. <laughs> right? And what yeah. people don't get is if you go from the branches of science, from the formal sciences, which includes logic, mm -hmm. which includes mathematics, which includes some branches of computer science, they are exact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can write the equation of a circle in mathematics of a perfect circle that can never be realized because we're in a world made of atoms. And atoms, you know, is, is granular. There's going to be gaps. Mm -hmm. There's going to be deviations. But that x squared plus y squared equals r squared, that's perfect, right? The next level are the physical sciences. Physics. You can make a prediction with the with the theories, the mathematics of physics. The, the electron G factors, it's called. The prediction of the theory and the observational measurement agree to 16 decimal places. 
Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Then you get the chemistry. Mm-hmm. You lose some decimal places in your ability to predict because now you're more in a uh you have to make some assumptions. You can't model it exactly like you can in physics, right? Then you get to like the life sciences, mm-hmm. right? Biology. So if you look at an error bar in physics, you know, it's so tiny. What is the error bar when a doctor tells you your prognosis? Plus or minus a lifetime. Right. You could die the next second yeah. or spontaneously heal. Sure. Right? Yeah. Then you get into the social sciences. Right? Your error bars just blow up. Man, you can take two mm-hmm. twins, yeah. put them in the exact same situation. And they could respond to it completely different. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So science ain't science is another one about, you know, mm-hmm. what what is the precision of that science? Sure. And its ability to make predictions varies based on what the science the is. Yeah. So that tangent from podcasts. <laughs> Oh, yeah. But I love it. So yeah. you're listening to podcasts. You're listening. Yeah. You're, you're watching YouTube. Right, right, right. And you are listening to music all the time. Oh, yeah, all the time. Okay. And, and if you listen to my playlist, mm-hmm. it crosses decades of genres. Sure. Right. I'm loving that Afrobeat London stuff yeah. these yeah, days. Yeah. Um, you know, whenever I go to like a country, I'm like, yeah, who's the artist here? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's funny. I was the African students faculty advisor for the African Student Association at Florida okay. Tech. Okay. And it was mostly Nigerians. They refused to let anything but Nigerian play. <laughs> and they're like, come on, we got Kenyans here. We got we got a few other countries. Let's get some right. South Africans some Cuesta. You know? <laughs> like, no. Right. It's our mistake. <laughs> it's all we're saying is Nigerian. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we all love music. And fortunately, Afrobeats is the number one music. In, in the world time. right now? Yeah. Oh, number one streaming, yeah. yeah. Can you imagine? Nuts, right? Yeah. So exactly. the African Americans, ain't it? No. Right. <laughs> we're, we're the leaders of world music. Right. <laughs> you know who would have thought, but here we yeah. are. Yeah. Well, you know, I think the Brits always have had a big impact, at least in America, with mm. their music. You know, they got a little funk somehow. Yes. Yeah, yes. it doesn't like... Yeah. Because you know, so I, so I look at the African American music, and I feel like it comes out of the oppression that we that people went through throughout the, the, the story 19th to 20th century yeah. right yeah. yeah but the pain and the music the feeling you know mm-hmm. just even in the 70s so living a life in the 70s yeah. is so different right. than by the 90s right yeah. you know the 90s yeah. is yeah, when yeah. things really changed right. a lot right. but of course things really changed a lot in the 60s too but it was sure. another sure. really changed a lot sure, sure. <laughs> but, but, but to your point music it tells the story of the times yeah, very well yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so I you know I love some Curtis Mayfield mm-hmm. you know but here's the thing that gets me like I listen to music like right now there's a lot of cats talking about like they're so oppressed and got it so hard in America. And I'm like, dude, you don't know what hard is. Right. What are you talking about, right? right. Like, KRS-One, one of my favorite rappers, mm-hmm. he had this song in the 80s, Love's Gonna Get You, Yeah. right? Yeah. So at this one point in the song, he goes, I got beans, rice, and bread on my shelf as talking about how poor he is. Yeah. Then later, when he starts doing drug <laughs> dealers, he got, now there's steak with the beans and rice. I'm like, dude, you got beans and rice. What are you complaining about? You don't understand. There's people with no nope. food. Right. You can go to countries that can't find a fat person at all. Right. right? You know? Yeah. yeah. You you don't get it. You know, and I'm like, tough guys? Oh, phew. man, I was at the border between Zambia and Tanzania, and it's like no man's land. Mm-mm. Whole new definition of tough guys. <laughs> like, right. I like, I like yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Oh, man. I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it, it, it's, it, you know, it's Different levels world. to it. Yeah. It's levels it's to levels. it, right? Yeah. And, and if you're here in America, you're very fortunate mm-hmm. that there is, a, even though you have it hard, there's it's levels to easier. it. easier, yeah. There's yeah. levels. I mean, yeah. if you're homeless, living in a hot city in a tent, yeah, that's pretty damn rough. Sure. That's pretty damn rough. Sure. But if you're housed... Yes. In the U.S., chances are you're doing way better than at least 50 percent of all humanity. Mm. You know, mm. you know, it's it gets really rough. You know, I've been in the slums and in, mm. in various places. You yeah. know, I know about the flying toilet, you know, yeah. and yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's, yeah. You know, yeah. 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 That's the truth. Yeah. It's, it's, it's what's happening. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I like to tell my friends, I was like, look, dude, in America, we're so rich. Our houses just sit out in the open. I've never mm-hmm. said that to a person that understands mm-hmm. it. I'm, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, most of the world understands what that means. Right. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's true. Yeah. It's, yeah, true. it's true. And, and yeah. a lot of people don't understand the consequences. Like, our American ancestors went through the Depression. Mm-hmm. And coming out of that, they created this social safety net yeah. with their 20, yeah. 30 years, yeah. right? Yeah. So now we have these people like, oh, it's free money. Blah, 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 blah. You can't give away free money. I'm like, okay. 
So you want every city to have massive slums. Right. So now you got to live behind a wall with right. razor wire on it. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. right? You don't understand what you're really saying. Right. Because you don't have enough experience. Exactly. In, in the world, or exposure. Right? And the, and exposure. the, the, the yeah. media machine is doing what it's doing. It's doing what it's doing. Yeah. yeah. Hollywood. You're looking at Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, you know, but I tell you, though, one thing about my life. Is that with my son? Mm-hmm. Because I did have it, you know, as far as America goes, you know, I used to say I grew up poor and I were like, no, 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 I grew up American poor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there there mm-hmm. was levels to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it was tough. It was really the, the human conflict. Yeah. That was a tough thing, sure. right? Which I had to deal with. And, you know, I, I, I was somewhat neglected and put out to, out there to be mm-hmm. set upon by predators of various sorts mm-hmm. and bullies. But as my son was growing up, I could look at him at every age and think about what I was going through at that age and just feel so good mm. that he has not had to go through sure, that. Sure, right? sure, yeah. sure. And that's that's kind of the meaning of, of family and, yeah. and growing into, you know, if our parents can give us something better, that's that's their yeah. job done. So Absolutely. good job, Dad. Well, it ain't done. <laughs> well, people so say, far, so people far. Say, people, say, so far <laughs> people say, you must be so proud. I'm like, I am... What is the word? Cautiously optimistic. Right. Yeah. I'm optimistic. We've made yeah. it this far. Yeah. yeah let me, you know, because, yeah. you know, being a dude, we're idiots. <laughs> we're self destructive. You know, you got to get a dude to like 26. Then you're like, okay. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> now That's you're no good, longer an idiot. That is a good number. Now yeah. you're no longer an idiot. Yeah. Right? But I'm 26, I feel like. Because, you know, there's a lot of studies that show little boys yeah. should start school perhaps a year later than little girls. Do. Right. Oh. And, you know, I've been seeing a lot of that in the sure. educational stuff. And, sure. the, and the difference in the outcome for them is massive. Huh. Yeah. Because yeah. that Because we're little idiots. Like, we're little... <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're little, right. Uh, yeah. But the, the female mind, the, the research shows, does mature more quickly. Sure. Right? Yeah. And, and it's yeah. obvious. I, like, I would always hear that growing up. Mm-hmm. And when I was in graduate school, this summer, we get these high school students. Yeah. And it was so obvious. You could see it, yeah. It was so obvious yeah. the difference between the girls and the boys. Yeah. Like, you could actually yeah. hold a conversation with some of the high school girls. Right. <laughs> right. Like, right, 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 right. I mean, as a woman, I can kind of vouch for that. But... <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you probably had to be like, oh, yeah, let me a, little help bit, you out a little bit, but it's all love. It's, it's all, all love. love. It's all love. Yeah. Well, like I said, we just want to get the best out of yes. who we are and what we can do. Exactly. You know, and, and what, but you know, there's so it, there's so much arbitrariness to life. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Right. But you look at exactly. the aspiration that we have. You look sure. at this, this this science fiction. You know, we're beyond all these. Things yes. that yeah. you know impact us today, all the right. hierarchies and all right. the pettiness, right? But it's so interesting because most of the science fiction that I read just kind of extrapolates it and blows it up, or so, it becomes uh, what like post-apocalyptic. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's either post-apocalyptic or ideal. Right. Yeah. 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 So we'll see. Heaven in space. Yes, yeah. we shall yeah. see. Yeah. We shall see. So Hakeem, thank you so <laughs> so much for your time, yeah. your yeah. your generosity, and yes. your wonderful mind. So before. We sign off for today. Can you share any last thoughts with our audience? Oh, man, you put me on the spot. Mm -hmm. Okay, audience, I just want to let you know, if if you are ever asked to be on a podcast, just she paid me (laughs) $180,000 British pounds to be here. So that's just the, the, the baseline. Yes. So that's what you should expect. Right. Uh, <laughs> Mind you, this is a gentleman who he admitted to me that he was a stand-up comedian. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So I'll just right. say <laughs> Tell him, tell him, you must pay me twice what you're right. paying me. Right. <laughs> Nothing. Twice. You know? Yeah. So yeah. I don't know, man. I, I just feel like, you know, be yourself. Just yeah. go out there, be you, yeah. live you. You can do anything. Yeah. And one thing I want to say, I don't know if you're out meant to inspire but one thing i've seen in life that is telling to me and again it's it's in america because i work in other countries i know that you don't always have opportunities but here every person i know who wanted to become something outside of sports and entertainment Hmm. that actually worked to become it achieved it Mm. every Mm -hmm. single time it's just a matter Mm -hmm. of do you go for it and not quit right it doesn't mean it's easy doesn't mean it happens fast yeah but when i thought when i set my sights on doing all the things i wanted to do it all started off you know tough right (laughs) right Right. difficult sure and not bad (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You know, but there's that phrase, entrepreneurs work for free. Right. Because what you're doing is you're creating relationships. You're you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're learning your chops mm-hmm. you're, you, and you're putting in that time and, and the universe pays off. They're mm-hmm. like, I see you putting in that time mm-hmm. effort. Mm-hmm. It's been five years. Yeah. So I'll tell you uh, uh, one last story. My brother-in-law. Yes. 
this dude achieved the height that you could achieve where we were for a black guy. Okay. He was a low level manager at the local plant. Okay. Then he ruptured his lumbar disc. Oh. And he couldn't work for years. He had surgery, couldn't work for a couple of years. And he goes back to work. And after like three weeks, he quits and he says, I can't work for anyone anymore. Mm. And that was shocking mm-hmm. because like I said, what are you going to do? Sit around? And he basically did sit around at home for like a year. And it was like, couldn't believe it. Right. And I come home from Tougaloo one day and he's like, hey, man, I figured it out what I'm going to do. And I'm like, what? He's like, I've been looking around. So this is like the 80s. Mm-hmm. He's like, I've been looking around, looking for what the opportunity is. And one thing I noticed in the trend that's happening right now is there's a lot of people that used to do things for themselves, but and now they pay, they pay somebody to do it. Mm-hmm. For example, you see all these oil change places that are popping up? Everybody used to change their own oil. Mm-hmm. He said, I think the next big thing is nobody's going to mow their own lawn. Hey, voila. He said, I went to Laurel, Mississippi, and I looked around. There's only two lawn maintenance and uh, landscaping companies. Mm-hmm. And I look at the job they do, I know I can do better than them. But what's going to give me the ace in the hole is I'm going to go to Jones Junior College and I'm going to get an AA degree in horticulture. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to separate me. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what he was talking about. It sounded ridiculous to me. But of course, I'm going to be encouraging in the moment. Yep. He sat me down later. Yep. And he said, Hakeem, let me tell you something, man. If you ever decide to go in business for yourself, You better have, you better be in it for at least five years. Yes. He said, my first year, I made $5,000. My second year, I made $30,000. Last year, I doubled that. And this year, I'm doubling it again. Now, here we are in Mississippi where $4 an hour was a bomb. And I stop and I go, are you saying you about to make $120,000 this year? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I already did. Because it was over Christmas, we was telling me. He's like, yeah, yeah I already did. I'm going to double it again this year, right? Oh, Up wow. until that time, I lived with him yeah. and my sister in their trailer in the woods. A trailer that was destroyed in Hurricane Katrina. My sure. mom lived in the big sure. old tree, fell through it. Yeah. So he goes on to build a big house on the hill and hire the community, mm-hmm. which is where it stands today, mm-hmm. right? Of course, the competition is there. Grew up now. Right. Everybody right. has a landscape. Sure, so much. sure, sure. But he 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 saw it. He, he saw it. it. He established it. He yeah. hired the, the the cats in the community, and that's all it is is mm-hmm. is having your idea and executing it, and yeah. being, and being committed to it, yeah. right? If he's like, yeah. I'm not making no money in this, I'm out. He wouldn't have got into the life of where you don't have to go to work every day. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is a perfect way to end the conversation. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Thank, Thank you for that. Thank it's you. it's persistence, it's intention. Uh, yes. And it's uh, vision. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yes. you. You inspired me. Oh, yes. yes Thank yes, you. Yes, yes. All right, Glocal Citizens, this has been another episode of the podcast. You can catch us Tuesdays with new episodes at GlocalCitizensPod.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe, tell a friend it helps others find great content on the internet if you leave us a review as well so do that we really appreciate it so please do check the show notes there were so many names that were shared and so many concepts that i will put in the show notes so don't worry you will get to review them and do your own study and well until next time bye for now